I'm gonna share with you the most powerful persuasive tool that I have ever learned in 20 years teaching this stuff. It's one thing to make people like you. It's entirely something else to get them to take an action at your request or on your behalf. Taking out their credit card and becoming your client. Agreeing to an invitation to meet you somewhere else at a later time and actually showing up. In this video, you're gonna learn the ultimate key to making people do what you want them to do. Have you ever had a situation where you had to give a talk to like a big group of people where the stakes were pretty high for you to not screw it up? Like maybe you were giving a speech at a wedding or a big presentation to all of your colleagues in some huge meeting at work. If you're like most people, this kind of situation can actually cause you a lot of anxiety. And ironically, that very anxiety can basically ensure your failure. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a scene from HBO's Succession, which chronicles basically this aging billionaire's final years and how all of his children sort of like jockey position to be the successor running this giant media empire that he's built. Now, a lot of people, they see this show as a drama. Personally, I think it's one of the funniest shows on TV. Uh, <laughs> it's got like a ton of cringe moments from the oblivious billionaire children. My boy Squiggle cooked up this beat for me. L to the OG. Dude be the OG. A and he playing. But in any case, in this scene, we're going to take a look at our hero, the charismatic CEO, Logan Roy, and he's facing a challenge. Basically, he's in the middle of this business deal where he's selling part of his media conglomerate and he's got to ensure his employees at his uh, news network that everything's going to be okay. And he's furthermore, he's actually got to motivate them to actually push beyond their limits. Now, some additional context here. He has also had some high profile scandals recently that have brought his reputation, his health, and his competence into question. So this is a very high stakes situation and it puts his charisma, it puts his speaking skills to the test. And basically the future of his company is sort of hanging in the balance. And as we dive into this conflict, you're gonna look at and uncover a lot of the secrets of Logan's powerful speech and learn how to unlock your own persuasive abilities. Before we look at that, however, we're gonna see him be introduced by one of his employees, Tom, who, to put it lightly, isn't very charismatic. Tom. Yeah. You wanna uh, do a little intro for me? Well, of course. On the, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, hi. Just want to say hi. Um, come on over. Yeah, it's been a tough few weeks. Right off the bat, we see that Tom's voice is very shaky. It's very uncertain. Even the, his body language, when when Logan asked him to stand up on the box, he's like, oh, uh, here? Uh, okay. And then as he calls everybody over, he's got this sort of trying for a poor vocal tonality that lilts up a little bit at the end. It's like, hey, everybody, um, come on over. Just want to say hi. He's communicating that he's uncertain of what he's saying. The actual control and interference pattern that's going on when something like this happens. In, in a situation like this, you're very aware that you're on stage. You're very aware of being observed therefore very aware of potential judgment your mind it senses there's about to be a, a change in the quality or quantity of energy put your being that you're putting out through your face voice and body as such it then anticipates that potential judgment it says this could be dangerous for me I could be perceived as pushy or aggressive or silly or stupid or weird or whatever it's like I need to tamp this down I need to control this flow of energy and keep it within the box that I've been conditioned is safe. And usually it'll do that by bringing into play physical tension. Appreciate you all. Oh, keep cranking, because we're doing great. Up 3% in the demo, week over week. Whoa. <laughs> Up 3%, right? So here, Tom, he doesn't really know what to say to encourage people, so he's relying on basically statistics. And that's not really going to generate a lot of energy in the crowd, right? It's very boring. It's very bland. He was feeding these people. He'd be giving them like unseasoned oatmeal. But, you know, we can do more, uh, a 15% uh, year over year. And uh, <coughs> we're real pleasure to have the big man here to give us some, uh, some support. Even that coughing, the, the, the subtle onset of tension as a result of anticipation of judgment it can happen almost subliminally. 
there are many ways that it might manifest. Now, if you're out and you're trying to meet people, or again, you're in a situation where you're about to give a, a speech, you, that anticipation of judgment comes in. And like I said, the mind, it wants to shut down the flow of energy to protect you. So it'll call into play physical tension as it's sort of enforcer to tamp that down. The thing about this is you are likely, you've likely been, like these control patterns aren't verbalized and you've likely held them to be useful and necessary for your protection for so long that you're probably unaware of them. They're usually below your threshold of awareness. That's why a lot of this training that we do, a lot of, you know, even watching these videos is designed to help you become aware of these subtle tensions that will come into play when you're about to express yourself in a way that you're, you know, is kind of out of the norm to tamp down that emotional expression, to keep you safe, to keep you in the parameters that'll save you from the judgment of the group. Unfortunately, yeah, you won't get, you know, rejections, you won't get made fun of, you won't get embarrassment, you won't lose validation, but you also won't succeed. Sure, up you come. <laughs> Tom offers him help up on the box and he's like, nah, I'm just gonna go, like he's like 85 years old or something here. But he's like, no, nah, I'm gonna go up by myself. Again, he's aware that his posture and body language need to, particularly in this situation, exude confidence, exude control. Good afternoon, everybody. 15% up year on year. Well, it's a shame we're up 40 on costs. I guess it evens itself out in the end, I mean, does it? So right off the bat, he's breaking rapport with them. He's not like, hey, everybody, I hope you like me. Now, again, he's assuming the frame. He's assuming the frame of control because he is the undisputed boss of this entire organization. However, I, again, he's going to start off by controlling the frame right off the bat. Is 15 equal to 40, pal? Uh, Is 15 equal to 40, pal? No. No! Good! Good head for numbers. <laughs> so then he kind of deflates the tension there with a little joke. <laughs> You're the best, or you wouldn't be in here. But you've got to knuckle down for me. I'm going to be spending a lot more time in here because I love it in here. I fucking love it! I don't want to know about 3% week on week. I want to know that we are killing the opposition. I want to be cutting their throats. They can't believe what we did. Something everyone knows, but nobody says because they're too fucking lily livered. They cannot believe what we said and the fact that we fucking said it. Anyone who believes that I'm getting out Please shove the bunting up your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna build something better, faster, lighter, meaner, wilder. From in here, with you lot, you fucking pirates! Oh, While, albeit that is a fictional television program, it really is a masterclass in how to rile up and fire up a crowd of people to your side. So we, and as soon as I saw that last, the other week, I was like, wow, I got to do a video about that. So you see that again, Tom's voice in the introduction, it's very shaky. It's very uncertain, but Logan's voice immediately powerful, commanding. He's bellowing, he's yelling. He's got a lot of different tonality and modulation. So you want to practice projecting your voice with confidence and conviction. Another thing is frame control. Logan takes immediate control of the room as soon as he steps up, making his presence felt. So you want to develop a strong presence and be assertive in these types of situations rather than shying away and saying, I hope they like me, I hope they like me. Right off the bat, you've got to assume that familiarity, you've got to assume control of the room, and just, again, hit them right as soon as they say action. Additionally, we talked a little bit about body language. Tom's body language suggests nervousness, while Logan's posture, his gestures, even the way he stepped up onto the, the boxes conveys confidence and authority. So again, pay attention to your posture and your gestures as these are communicating a ton about you on that subcommunication level. But perhaps most importantly, and this is again, that number one thing I was talking about at the top of the video, 
Logan's speech focused on emotions and the human spirit, while Tom relied on statistics. You really want to connect with your audience by tapping into their emotions. He also did this with um, creativity. His speech was filled with vivid imagery, like you're pirates, shoving up your ass, et cetera, et cetera. That made, this made it very memorable and very impactful. I even got a little, little chill on my neck at certain points where it's like, damn, this guy's extremely charismatic. So you want to be bold. You want to be imaginative when you're conveying your ideas. In, you know, in classic Aristotelian, Aristotelian uh, persuasion, he talks about three things, ethos, pathos, and logos. So ethos is basically your authority in a situation, you know, and in that situation, obviously, Logan had the ethos because he's the boss. However, the other two, logos and pathos, are really what I think are, are most important here to, to comment on. So logos is appeal to logic, appeal to analysis which is what kind of Tom tried to do at the beginning. He's like, we're 3% month over month, 15% year over year. And again, he kind of rolled his eyes at that. Finally, there's pathos or the appeal to emotion. And this one, out of those three, logos, pathos, ethos, this one is the most effective way to get people to take action. Again, to take out that credit card, to accept your invitation to go elsewhere. So the way to do this is to mirror people's emotions and then lead them toward the desired outcome. Storytelling, it's a great way to build emotions and humor can be particularly effective. However, of course, there's all, there's all kinds of other emotions that can be effective as well. Anger and outrage is phenomenal at getting people to take action. For example, people might feel anger towards their current situation or anger towards a rival group that is doing better than us. In this, in this clip, Logan kind of used that to an extent, like we're gonna destroy these competitors. He's not trying to change their minds. He's trying to change their mood. And that is the number one way to persuade people to take an action on your behalf. You know, a lot of people, they go toward down the analytic path. Like here are the reasons why this is a good deal. Here are all the reasons, like in, for example, if you're doing sales, I know a lot of people who are really great at like listing the features of the product. Nobody's laying in bed thinking about features. They're lying in bed thinking about their future. So if you can paint an emotional picture about that future and change their mood, that's when they're gonna sign on the dotted line. You know, if you actually, it's kind of interesting because sometimes people that you're talking to, they'll try to put you in an analytic frame. To, and that, but the problem with that is it kills any buying temperature. It kills any sort of, again, magic that's there in the relationship and it's actually gonna make them less likely to take action. So, you know, for example, if you're in a business deal, they'll get bogged down in the details and the numbers. Or if you're talking to someone, uh, you know, to try to build a connection or a relationship, they'll start talking about boring bullshit. Like, where do you, what do you do? Where do you live? Maybe you'll find yourself doing that. Like, because you don't know what else to say or you don't know how to unlock these sort of creative, imaginative energies and paint these pictures and tell stories and things like that. That's what really creates a buying temperature. So you, you start going on this garden path of analysis and it just kills all the magic. And it just, you'll literally feel the interaction sort of go pear-shaped. Like maybe initially it was exciting when you started talking to them and then it kind of goes wah, wah, wah because you took it too analytical. So again, appealing to emotion is the number one way that I've found over the past 20 years to actually get people to take action. Avoiding that analytical, logical discourse as much as you can. And remember, always remember, change their mood, not their mind, and then learn how to throw forth invitations that are likely to be accepted and then close decisively. Now that we've looked at the secrets behind Logan Roy's charisma, it's time to apply these lessons to your own life. If you're ready to take your public speaking, if you're ready to take your persuasive capabilities, your charisma to the next level, I invite you to join my eight week charisma mentoring program. In this program, you're gonna work on the very elements we discussed in this video, like unlocking creative potential, unlocking imaginative capability, learning how your intellect is creating these tension entanglements that are preventing you from expressing yourself vocally, from conveying yourself through body language and gesture in a confident way. You're gonna learn about all of these things, receiving personalized guidance that's going to help you to unlock your full potential. 
don't miss this opportunity to transform your social interactions and become the charismatic hero you've always envisioned. Click the link in my description. Here you can learn more about the Charisma Mentoring Program. Sign up. I'd love to be a part of your journey. Be an honor and a privilege as always. This is Jeffy, and I'll see you next time. Jeffy.